Hi everyone, this is Fred Martin, and I'd like to welcome you to the CSTA interview series, What is Computational Thinking? The goal of this series is to gain perspectives on computational thinking by visiting with leaders in the field. Um, I'm gonna introduce myself and my colleague and, our, and then um, our guest, Carolyn Sakura. Um, my name is Fred Martin. I'm a faculty member in computer science at the University of Massachusetts Lowell. Um, the university representative to CSTA and I'm also chair-elect to CSTA's board of directors. And uh, Joe, are you there? I hope I'm there, can you hear me? Yes, you are, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, I don't know about my video, but anyway, uh, so my name is Joe Kamak, I'm also a member of the CSTA CT Task Force, a retired computer science and mathematics uh, educator, and generally I do lots of computer science education, consulting, and presenting on computational thinking. Uh, today we are delighted to welcome Carolyn Sakura. Carolyn is a senior director of ISTE Standards. Welcome, Carolyn. Hi, Joe. Hi, Fred. Thanks so much for having me. It's really a pleasure being here with you today. Great. Fred and I have a set of questions that we put together to get our conversation started. But first, uh, how about if you introduce yourself and maybe uh, tell us a bit about your background in your current position at ISTE? Sure. So I am the senior director of ISTE Standards, and the ISTE stands for the International Society for Technology and Education. I've been with the organization uh, for 10 years um, and four of those as director of the standards. Um, and prior to that, have always worked on the standards, um, but ISTE itself is, uh, works with uh, K-12 teachers and tech coaches and uh, curriculum specialists to integrate uh, effectively technology for learning. Um, and and uh, through all my work in the standards, I'm able to, um, sort of embrace sort of the thought leadership and the um, practice of computational thinking in, in my work and share that with our members. Thank you. Uh, we'd like to um, continue with what you just started to talk about um, by asking you if you've had, have you had the experience of describing CT to someone who is unfamiliar with the concept, you've never heard of computational thinking, and, and how would you describe it? Yes. Oh, okay. Great, great question. And it's one that when I start talking about computational thinking, um, people are really puzzled. Um, you know, I may be working with, um, you know, K-12 teachers that are non-computing teachers. I may be working with school leaders or parents. Um, in, in all these cases, computational thinking, um, they will get a puzzled look on their face or they'll say something like, is it thinking like a computer. And um, that is often um, a really frightening prospect for a lot of people because they think it's sort of, um, it doesn't reflect our humanity. And so I really, the way I, uh, because of the audience that I'm talking to, our members and, and their uh, peer educators, um, I often like to describe it as critical thinking plus the power of computing to solve problems. And you know, when putting that context around it, it makes it accessible to K-12 teachers. They, they may be adept um, in using technology, uh, but they're less so in terms of looking under the hood, so to speak. But putting them in this context of problem solving, um, it's sort of that, you know, we describe it as a combination of knowledge, skills, and, and dispositions or attitudes, if you'd like, that makes um, computational thinking more familiar to teachers. It's um, just because of the vocabulary. Um, and because computational thinking is so new, I really see my role with um, the population that I work with is to increase the awareness and value of computational thinking, and then providing a context for teachers to understand it and apply it. And I really think of my approach as sort of one baby step at a time. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you. So, so Carolyn, um, you and I and a whole bunch of other people about 10 years ago, maybe not, maybe not quite 10 years ago, mm -hmm. we sat in a room a couple different times and developed, uh, developed really an understanding of CT. So has your understanding of CT changed over the past few years? And, and if so, how and why? Yeah, no, um, um, Joe, it was great working with you and others at the uh, Computer Science Teachers Association. Um, we, we got a funding, got funding from the National Science Foundation to really start um, defining 
for K-12 education and operational definition for um, CT. Um, and that, that work was really came out of um, that meeting that you were talking about where there were thought leaders and practitioners in the room. And we, at the time, computational thinking was really in the realm of higher ed and much less in the realm of K-12. And so um, because of our collaboration with the CSTA, we were able to sort of build that bridge between the higher ed thought leadership um, and, and the computing professionals um, to K-12 educators. And we, in, to, in 2011, published the operational definition uh, for computational thinking in K-12, as well as um, resources um, that would help teachers understand that. Um, and what made that, that was in 2011, and what made that at the time, um, it was very um, foundational. So we were putting our, our real goal at the time in terms of introducing computational thinking to teachers was to put it in a vocabulary and in a format they understood. So we had lesson plans, um, and guide on the side to really make those connections between CT and lessons. Because um, what we wanted to do and, and the purpose of CT was not to isolate it in just the computing classes or just the math classes, but really from kindergarten through 12th grade, really have it across the grade band, across curriculum. So history teachers and, and math teachers and elementary ELA teachers could all be building those skills and giving um, students exposure to that. So what was, what's really changed, what I've seen um, change since um, we started working on this in 2009, is that um, computational thinking is starting to get sort of into the lexicon of K-12 education. And there are really um, early adopters, you know, K-12 non-computing teachers who are really embracing things like Hour of Code or Scratch or other ways of, um, you know, the robots, other ways of embracing CT um, in a way that's comfortable in their classroom. And, and we didn't really see that in 2009. And so I feel like um, this, this collaboration really laid the found foundation uh, for that work um, in K-12 education. Carolyn, you're ta uh, you were talking about um, bringing CT across um, disciplines, and I wanted to ask, how, how do you see computational thinking as distinct from other thinking skills? That's a really good question. I, I think there's actually a lot of similarities with other ways of thinking. Um, I think all, you know, in K-12 education, I think it's really important for students to experiment and exercise a variety of thinking muscles. So um, not everybody that, um, you know, we all want students to become, use, you know, uh, do creative thinking. Not all those creative thinking exercises turn into an artist. Um, we want a lot of um, students to do um, you know, the scientific method and, and, and uh, more scientific thinking, but not, they don't all become scientists. That doesn't mean that, that those variety of ways of thinking, they're all important. And computing um, and computational thinking is really um, important, and it's, ex and it's important to expose to all students throughout their academic career. Um, we know that, um, you know, part of the reason for that is practical, you know, um, in, in our country and others, you know, really trying to fill that workforce pipeline um, is important. And, and a lot of people uh, want, know that our, our jobs today and in the future are going to continue to be dependent on real, a knowledgeable workforce that knows computing. Um, you know, we know that uh, exposure in K-12 to students becoming sort of the tool creators and not just the tool users is really exciting. Um, and just as I was saying before that not every um, creative thinking exercise turns somebody into an artist, um, but it allows that student when they get older to be able to be able to communicate with artists. Same thing with computational thinking. 
it's um, as more industry and workforce places rely on computing, having the non-computer scientists um, be able to communicate with the data analytics people, with the tool creators, with the, um, you know, the other areas within computing, there has to be a bridge of communication that we understand um, each other. And I think for um, students today and in the workforce, that being able to have that vocabulary will be really important to um, being able to do more innovation, to being able to be more efficient, to be able to uh, really combine all of our talents and not isolate ourselves from one another. And I think laying that foundation of computational thinking in K-12 for all students helps lay, lay that groundwork for that future. Thank you. Uh, Carolyn, you know, you've been instru very instrumental, as a matter of fact, really very instrumental in being the champion for computational thinking within ISTE. And I know that uh, when you shared some of the early drafts of the uh, standards with me and a few others, uh, I, was, I, had big, I had a big, big smile on my face. So, so recently, uh, you know, the, these standards have been released now, and uh, they've been deeply revised and in in terms of bringing in a lot of the computational thinking. So, so uh, you know, can you please tell us how the, for the rest of the audience, how the computational thinking plays a significant part in these revised student standards that are very widely adapt, adopted rather across the country? Yeah, no, I'm happy to talk about that. I'm excited about to talk about that. Um, ISTE has been publishing um, standards for students since 1998. Um, this is our third uh, iteration or third version of it. They've really evolved over the years. In 1998, um, the standards really focused on how to use technology. Um, the standards that were just released um, in June, the 2016 version, um, really focuses on amplifying learning with technology. So they've um, evolved. Um, and But through all those almost two decades now of the having standards, um, the ISD standards for students, they're not intended to be, you know, high stake standards, but they're intended to um, help students and help teachers um, build a pathway to gaining those skills. Like what is the destination? What, do, what are the kinds of knowledge skills and dispositions that students need to have? And um, so we have a long history of, of building standards that have really guided um, the use of effective use of technology for learning uh, for a long time. Um, and so with these new standards, I'm very excited um, that we have uh, one whole standard devoted to computational thinking. That was really intentional, um, partly because of the work that we, we had done um, and part of really reading the tea leaves and where we're going, um, you know, looking for um, building uh, a set of skills that when, when students graduate, that they have skills for college and career and for their life. And um, having computational thinking in there was really sort of a stake in the ground uh, for ISTE, which I think will have a really big impact for helping to promulgate um, computational thinking in K-12. Um, like you said, Joe, um, the ISTE standards are uh, adopted and used by many schools, districts, and states. Um, the 2016 standards um, are already adopted by Los Angeles uh, United um, School District, Unified School District. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you, thank you. It's, it's, a, it's um, a big school district that is um, really known for innovation and um, are really putting this as their, their forefront of how it, they're using the standards and it was actually pushed out and led by um, the chief academic officer, not just the chief um, technology officer, technology directors. Um, and, the, and the state of um, Connecticut has just recently um, adopted the standards. And we're working now with other states and districts um, to, to um, put that in motion to get the standards adopted. So I feel like um, it will be, uh, ISTE's role to really, as we promulgate the standards in general, really introducing and putting at the forefront um, 
computational thinking among a population of ed educators that might not have um, had to look at them or pay attention to computational thinking. And our approach will be um, in terms of, you know, sharing the the awareness and understanding about that is really the excitement that students get out of um, doing some of this work. Um, Fred and I were talking before we came on the air, sort of the whole maker movement. So you've got, you know, that really tangible way of learning. And yes, you know, um, one of the attitudes that are written into the standards is persistence, persistence and tolerance for ambiguity and building those kinds of um, uh, dispositions early on through this. But, but at the same time, that level of satisfaction and uh, teamwork um, is, is something that's really important to building computational thinking skills too. So we're really excited to um, um, launch this um, and, and really people have been um, embracing it too. They're excited about the standards and um, excited and a little bit possibly nervous about the, the fact that there's a whole standard devoted to computational thinking, but uh, they're ready to go. Carol, this is our last question. You've sort of been touching on this already with the answer you, that you just gave. Um, but what, what do you see in the future for computational thinking? If you were to look 10 years ahead, what, what would you be seeing in terms of the standards and more generally about how they've been adopted and implemented? Mm -hmm. Well, that's a good question. Um, ISTE, the, the ISTE standards for students are actually reside within um, a couple of uh, things that I think will help impact how that moves forward. Um, we have uh, four sets of professional standards that support the student standards, including the ISTE standards for teachers, which is being refreshed now, the ISTE standards for administrators, so the leaders that help um, create the, the learning environment for these kinds of um, ways of learning, ISTE standards for coaches, and the ISTE standards for computa uh, computer science educators. Um, as well as um, the ISTE essential conditions, which are sort of system-wide um, con uh, considerations for how to build a, a, a culture of learning that uh, can use the standards. So I think as we move forward, um, I think the students will be um, probably the early adopters in computational thinking and that our role is um, really working with teachers over time um, to build their confidence in computational thinking and their comfort level. And so I think that, you know, it's always a bell curve. There'll be people who are, who are taking the lead and being the early adopters and creating those pockets of innovation and models for their peers. Um, and, you know, slowly you, you start building out concentric circles of people that, that start coming under that tent and start um, their own professional learning um, to be able to teach computational thinking. Um, and, and that expands that way. So I think that, um, you know, over the next 10 years, I think that there's going to be, or I, I'm hoping that there will be an explosion of computational thinking. Um, I think it will be good for um, education. I think it will be good for um, citizen building. Um, and, and, and our workforce. And I think it's a, it's a good uh, muscle to exercise for all of us. That's great. Um, Carolyn, thank you so much. And thank you for your leadership. Um, and I've really enjoyed meeting you. This is the first time we've met. Yeah, yeah it's my pleasure. Yeah, thank, thank you, you very so much, much. Thank you very much, Carolyn, wonderful. Yeah, thank you. I, I've really enjoyed it. Thanks. Thanks everyone, bye-bye. <laughs>